we welcome you to Grace Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you've joined us on this live stream and on this YouTube. This is Memorial Day weekend, a day in which we remember the great sacrifice of those who gave their lives to defend our nation. It's also a time for us to reflect on our freedoms and to think about ways that we can preserve those freedoms today and tomorrow. It's also a time for us to gather together to pray for peace in our world. It's certainly a tense time among nations and it's something that we can all do together today. It's what Jesus encouraged us to do, to be unified in praying. Good morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach, I'm an elder here, and we're delighted that you could join us once again here at Grace for a Sunday worship service. Just this past week, our session met uh, via Zoom on uh, Thursday night to discuss, among other things, a phased reopening of the Grace facilities in person and many options that are open to us. And number one priority, of course, is the safety of our members and our staff. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to encourage you to read the Presbytery guidelines on the Presbytery website for how we go through a safe uh, phase reopening. When we meet in person, we need to consider what our spacing is going to be. For us here at Grace, we're very flexible with our seating arrangement, and that shouldn't be a problem. We're looking at masks, hand sanitizer, disinfection methods, and how to continue offering these online services for those that are particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus. These are all wonderful options and we look forward to this next phase of opening grace. We are blessed to have Reverend Gill's guidance and leadership at this time and please make sure we all stay connected and communicating to make sure our reopening can occur safely. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. We'll all remember to wear red. Reverend Gill will be away traveling to Fort Walton Beach for Anne's mother's memorial service, but we still plan on having an online service with a guest pastor. Thank you. And now for our call to worship. It's based on Psalm 68. Please join me. Let the righteous be joyful let them exalt before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. We ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, and sing you our praises. Awesome is God in the sanctuary, the same God of Israel, who gives power and strength to the people. We ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, and sing you our praises. Let us worship God by singing hymn number 799 for those of you that have a hymnal at home. America the Beautiful, and yes she is. Yeah. 
in all goodness we are draped in accordance with your design as you have sent Jesus Christ to make your will known you promise your Holy Spirit to guide us along your path as your holiness fills our halls hear us as we worship your name amen and now I'd like to offer the prayers of the people on this Memorial Day weekend, thank you, Lord, for all those who have served our country and gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be free. We thank you for those currently serving our country. We ask for your protection for our brave sons and daughters at home and abroad. Lord, we continue to ask for strength and healing in this time of pandemic. Your sheltering care has kept us hopeful that we will be able to worship in person again soon. We ask for healing and restoration for Donna Williamson, Jeff and Valerie Hester, the Beharry family, and many others, friends and members of Grace. We ask your blessings on the high school and college graduating class of 2020. We offer prayers for our leaders in dealing with the pandemic and opening our communities safely and with common sense. We pray that the people of Venezuela can soon have fair leadership, and we pray that you strengthen grace and guide us into a new era of relevancy in our community. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have refused to hear the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace and the love of Jesus Christ remind you that our sins are forgiven. I'll now be reading our affirmation of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Amen. And now Brad will play hymn number 79, My Jesus, I Love Thee. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious 
cross, Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love Thee because Thou hast first loved me. send in your tithes and donations to the church office at 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. You make the work of the church continue. Thank you.
And now our prayer of dedication. Please join me. You pour out your love upon us, O God. You give us eternal life. As your mercy is made manifest in Christ Jesus, may thanksgiving be shown by our gifts. Accept what we offer as signs of our humble gratitude for all that you do on our behalf. Make us useful servants of Christ in bringing your sons and daughters to a greater sense of your glory. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is taken from Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10, and then 32 to 35. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Today our scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning with verse 1. Hear the word of God. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson, the word of our Lord.
When I was a teenager in the 1960s, a friend of mine, Patty Laughlin, in high school, invited me to go to my first concert. It was really a club in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. And she said, there's a singer there that I think you would really enjoy. And I said, well, well who is it? And she said, well, he's, he's a blues singer. And I don't really know how to describe the blues to you, but he's really good, and his name is B.B. King. B.B. King, who would be later known as the King of the Blues. And so we go down to this small club, and B.B. King is sitting right in front of us, and he's got this guitar, he calls it Lucille, and he played these wonderful songs, and, and all he would, he would be sweating and, and showing such emotion as he would sing the blues about a little baby crying and how he was that way in love when he was left behind. And, and, and he sang a classic song, which would become just a, a, a really great classic in the world of music, The Thrill Is Gone. And it's all about forsaken love. Now that it's over, all I can do, he's saying, all I can do is wish you well. And he would sing that almost as a scream. It was, it was so powerful. And it was something that would send chills down your back. And I never forgot it. Now that you're gone, all that I can do is wish you well. Today we have Jesus praying for his disciples, and this is known in the church as being the priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus. He's praying for his disciples, and he's wishing them well for the future. What does Jesus pray for? He prays for them that they would glorify God by serving him, that they would glorify God by emulating our Lord Jesus Christ, by being faithful disciples. We see that in verses one through four, that Jesus is faithful on his journey to the cross. It says, after Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. And that is our key verse. I completed that work that you gave me to do, Father. And we see that Jesus did that. He went to the cross and he died that agonizing death. He didn't stop short. He came to show people the glory of God. Our Lord Jesus was so faithful. He could have dropped by the wayside, but he persevered and he completed the mission that he was called to do. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember people who made great sacrifices Recently, I watched a documentary on Queen Elizabeth, and I'm always learning more about her life, and, and you watch these old documentaries from World War II, and, and you see how Queen Elizabeth, as a young woman, got involved. Her parents, the king and the queen, they didn't want her to get involved in something that might be difficult during the war effort because it could be very dangerous for her. 
but she felt compelled to do something. She joined the army and, and she drove a truck and that endeared her to the people in England because she was helping in a way that she could on a much more personal level. The documentary points out how there was a terrible time when the Nazis were sending over planes that were controlled remotely and they were crashing in like drones and how some of these planes headed right for Buckingham Palace. And the Queen said, there you are at dinner and you hear a plane flying above you and you know that it shouldn't be there and suddenly there is dead silence and all of a sudden there was an explosion. The royal family could have been killed at that moment but the plane had dropped over into another section of the palace. It took a lot of courage for people to be strong during World War II. And what was very sad to see was just how many children that were killed with these bombs that were unleashed. During this time, many of the children were very brave. Some of them were messengers. One young boy by the name of Derek Balfour from Brighton would ride his bicycle and deliver messages to the different outposts along the way so that the people in Great Britain would know how to protect themselves and prepare the troops. And one day when he was delivering a message, a bomb exploded and he was mortally wounded. And Derek said as he was dying, tell them my name is Derek Balfour and tell them I delivered the message. What courage this young boy had. He was faithful and gave his life for the cause. And we see that that's what our Lord Jesus Christ did. He was faithful and he gave his life on the cross so that God might be glorified. We see how much God loved us and we don't understand all of this, but we know that God gave everything. He gave the gift of his only son, Jesus, to us. And sadly, people rebelled and he was crucified on a cross. But we see the great love and the great gift that God gave to us. And Jesus is praying that what he does glorifies God forever. And it does. We see, too, in verse 11, that Jesus prays these words. He says, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name. The Lord is praying that we would be protected, and that's important to remember. I feel that right now, that we are a distance apart. Every day is a part of living in strange days. We never know quite what's going to happen with this invisible enemy out there, this, this coronavirus. But we know that the Lord is holding us together through the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who is with us and, and binds us together. And we are grateful that we can have comfort and peace in our hearts, knowing that ultimately God is with us and that we will be triumphant. Now the rest of that verse says, protect them in your name, Lord. And 
I pray that they may be one as we are one. That they may be one as we are one. Our Lord Jesus Christ is praying for unity. And how important that is in the life of a church. We're all different. We come from different backgrounds. We're all very different. Some of us like contemporary music. Some of us like classical music. Some churches have opera singers sing in the choir. Some people have folk singers. Some people have amazing gospel music. We all have different tastes, but what brings us all together is our unity in our Lord Jesus Christ. As a pastor through the years, I've always encouraged church leaders to stay focused upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Not to think about themselves or what would be best for them, but what's best for the people of God. What would be pleasing in the eyes of our Lord Jesus? Our vision must always be upon our Lord Jesus. And in that way, we can strive to be unified. It makes us stronger as a church, as the body of Christ. Somebody who historically was amazing to me was Susanna Wesley. 300 years ago, she was a young girl, just 13, and she announced to her parents that she no longer wanted to be a Puritan, but she wanted to join the Anglican Church. And that was amazing that somebody that young would make that kind of statement, but they said, that's fine. And she went on to join the Anglican Church, and later on she, she met her husband there, and he was a minister in the Anglican Church, and, and they went off to Epworth, and she had a number of children. At least 10 of them lived to be adults. And as she was raising the children, in this small village of Epworth in England. She was very devoted to the children. She always took time each day to spend time with each one, and she would pray with them. She was an amazing woman. There were times when her husband would go out of town. He was the most educated person in this little town, and he was very frustrated with many of the farmers there and, and people who couldn't read or write. And he would say to Susanna, while I'm gone, you read my sermons to the congregation. R read them, read them the sermons on Sunday and, and that should be fine. Well, Susanna started reading these sermons. 20 people came, 40 people came, 100 people came. Next thing, there are 200 people in church. Now you gotta remember, this is before Netflix and, and TV and radio, and, and this was a wonderful thing. I mean, I think they were so impressed because here's somebody who can read, and I'm sure she probably had a very lovely voice, and she read maybe with some dramatic flair, who knows, um, but th they really enjoyed listening to her read the scriptures and hearing about the life of Jesus. And she, I'm sure, did it in a very beautiful and pleasing way. Of course, when her husband came back, he wasn't real happy to hear about how successful she always was, but, but she was somebody who conveyed the power of the scriptures and the good news to the people in that town. Susanna was somebody who, who really believed that, that the Lord loved everybody and that we need to show patience and kindness to all people and to be faithful in doing that. That made a great impression on Charles and 
John, two sons. And John would later go on to become an Anglican pastor along with his brother Charles. And John had a real gift for preaching and he asked the leaders in the Anglican church if, if he could go to the people in the coal mines and, and the people out in the farmland and to preach to them. And they said, no, no, no. You need to have your services in a church. That's the only place you can have your services. And he felt compelled to go down the road and to preach to the people who were a distance away. And he did. And thousands of people wanted to hear about our Lord Jesus. They wanted to hear the gospel. And he was extremely successful and the Lord blessed his work. It's just a wonderful thing to see how he had the vision to reach out to so many people, people in the mines, people in the farmlands. And he also had the desire even to come to America later on to become a missionary. Susanna had that wide vision of unity. And so did John and Charles Wesley. And here in our church, we too want to have that wide ministry where everybody's welcome, no matter what your background, no matter where you come from, that you would receive a warm welcome. I remember those days at Princeton Seminary when I was in Brown Hall, and it was like the United Nations because there were students from around the world. I remember turning on my record player, those were the days, with the vinyl records and I would play some music and students from China would wander down to the room and from Nigeria and Ethiopia and they would come and they would listen to the music. And what I always sensed during that time was how lonely it must have been for them to be so far away from home. It must have been a very lonely time. And I remember one fellow when his father passed away in Nigeria and he had to go all the way back, Uga, and it took him a long time. And then he came back to school. And I remember how we surrounded him with, with prayer and we prayed together, asking for the Lord to encourage him. And he went on to become a wonderful leader leading the church in Nigeria. And I remember sitting together in a campus room with a group of students from all over the world. And we were so different politically and culturally, but together we sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. And I've never forgotten that moment how we were so unified together as we sang that song. Christ is the one who breaks down all of our barriers and makes us one. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ is praying for today in this great priestly prayer, that we might be protected, that we might glorify the Lord, and that we might be one. That is what God wants for you, and that's what God wants for me. Pray for our church today. Pray that we might be one and unified. Let us pray now. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the freedoms that we have to come and worship you and to honor you. We thank you, Lord, for all those who have given their lives to defend our nation and the great sacrifices that men and women have made serving in the armed forces for the freedoms that we have. And we thank you now just for this time 
of worship, something that is a dear freedom for all of us. Lord, we pray that you would draw us together and during this difficult time that we might be stronger and that we might look to you. Help us, Lord, to be your light in this world and help us to always be faithful to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ go with you out of the world that you go See 